Hey what's up guys Josh here. So in this video I'm going to show you the first few things that you must be doing after purchasing a brand new laptop. Well we have actually done a couple of videos like this in the past but in this video I just want to summarize everything and make it in a single video. So in this video I'm going to go from the scratch right from the unboxing and the entire list of things that you got to do after that event. So make sure you watch this video entirely because everything will be covered in this video and I'll try my best. The first thing is to record a video when you are unboxing the laptop. Why do you need to record a video when you are unboxing the laptop? That's the question, right? Well, it's just a normal thing. Let's say that you get a broken, damaged laptop piece. You find that out right after the unboxing. When you record a video, you have the proof that the laptop was damaged inside the box itself. So this video can be useful later in case of damages. There's only a few steps recorded right from the unboxing, right from how you got the laptop, show all the things that are inside the box like the charger, the receipt, show all the essential numbers inside the receipt and try to make the entire video in a single clip. Don't stop the recording in between. And then file away the important documents like the invoice that comes with the laptop. And if you ask, essentially it's not necessary to keep the original box of the laptop. But in case of return, you might need the laptop's box with you. For claiming the warranty later, the purchase receipt is enough. You don't need the box that comes with the laptop. So the unboxing is done, right? Now the next thing is the setup process. You open up the laptop, but before you turn on the laptop, make sure that the power cord is plugged in. This is not the so-called force charging. People think that it's healthy for a newly bought electronic. But that's completely wrong. The only reason we need to charge a newly bought laptop or mobile is because it might have less charge from the box itself. So during the setup process, it can go out of charge and shut itself down, which might later end up in some corruption. And it's not necessary to charge your laptop ridiculously for 12 hours straight. First things first, just make sure that the power cloud is plugged in and then push the power button. If it is the first time that you are setting up a PC and you are really unaware about a lot of terms that are involved here then you can ask a peer near your home or you can go onto YouTube watch a couple of tutorials and do it all by yourself. But apparently it's not that complicated. The Windows Assistant will guide you through the process so it's not that tough at all. And it is important to remember the essential details that you give there like the password, the username, the email ID or the questions you answer for resetting a password. Things like these must be remembered. The entire setup process will take around 15 minutes and then it will get you into the Windows desktop. Then the next thing that you gotta do is to take a complete glance over your laptop. Just review everything. Review your laptop physically for uh, physical damages, review the charger, check the power cord, check the ports that are given around the laptop, plug different devices and check if they are working properly. Check the keyboard, you can use a keyboard tester online or you can use the Windows notepad itself, also the speakers and there's a lot of things that are involved in the physical testing process. Well, I've actually done a video before about this, so I'll give a card uh, here to that video so you can check that out and I hope that video will get a lot of things out of the way. And this is the Windows look right after the setup process. First of all, we have some finicky things to be done here. First of all, change the wallpaper if you prefer to. Well, I do, so I'm changing the wallpaper now. And now right click on your desktop, click here, then go to this location and then enable the this PC icon. This will get you the PC icon here through which you can open the file explorer. And now we are into the file explorer and here you can see one disk located here since we have a single HDD in this laptop. If you have an SSD that comes with your laptop then you will have two disks located here, one for the SSD and one for the HDD like the one in my laptop. And now to split this into different disks, you can create partitions here and to create partition, you can follow this method. It's not that hard at all. And now, speaking of storage, now opening up your laptop, 
you will have already seen a lot of applications essentially that you don't really have a need for like the security application that comes with your laptop well these are what we call as bloatwares the unnecessary softwares that are associated with your newly bought laptop so to delete these unnecessary softwares you can go to the settings or control panel go to the search bar search for control panel then you'll be headed here here click on uninstall a software and then you will get into this window here you can select the application that you don't have a need for in your laptop and then right click on it and click uninstall and likewise you can uninstall as many applications as you want so we have a cleaner laptop now but that's not how we are going to use this laptop right we need to install some applications that we use daily that's why we bought this laptop but to install these applications i have a recommendation here there is a website called 9night where you can install a bunch of softwares download them and install them at once instead of selecting the certain applications going to their websites and downloading them separately this website is really helpful to download a bunch of applications in your pc and it saves you a lot of your time so this is the website 9a.com you just head into that and then select the applications that you want to download here i'm just selecting the chrome which is really necessary because the you know the microsoft it sucks we all know that so installing the chrome and a video player and now go down click here and after download it will automatically install those applications into your pc and now here as you can see the selected applications are readily installed all right now we have done the setup cleared some storage in our laptop partitioned it uh, uninstalled the bloatwares unnecessary applications from our laptop as well as after cleaning the laptop we have installed a couple of softwares into our pc that are that we feel a uh, necessity for what now so we have done all these things but now we have the responsibility of protecting our pc right so moving on to the security section first of all i recommend you all to create a restore point creating a restore point is not that hard go to the search bar and search for restore point and then click on here create and then it will ask you a name to create that restore point you just put a name there and then click create well a lot of you might be unaware of the term uh, restore point well uh, what it does is that it's just a snapshot of the current settings of the drivers installed in your pc right at that moment you create that restore point so when your pc corrupts or something happens to your laptop then to restore your laptop back into its state you can use one of these restore points that you created recently and then it is just like traveling back in time you just click a restore point and then use that restore point you just take your laptop back to the state it was when we created a restore point in it but this restore point only concerns with the drivers and the settings of your laptop it does not concern with the files that are associated to your storage the install programs that you install in your laptop they are a separate section backup so to protect the files that are inside your laptop you got to make sure that you back up your laptop properly well i've already done a video on that topic so you can find a card here or link in the description to that video you can watch that after watching this video and that would be really helpful for you all right now moving on in the second step of protecting your pc we got to update the windows now a lot of you might question why is it necessary to update your windows you get new features of course but i don't really need those features then why do i have to update my pc well updating a laptop is not always because you get new features and not updating your windows can also be a problem later let me explain you why if you don't update your pc for a long time there might be some security loopholes in your pc through which new viruses can attack your pc and take control of it so that's a really important reason why you should update your laptop and then you have the drivers you got to update them as well you can go to the individual websites like nvidia website and the amd or intel uh, processor website and download the respective drivers and now we have a lot of things out of the way the setup process is done the testing thing is done setting up the laptop done now we have the testing process so first of all let's check the battery and for this just plug it to your laptop and then wait until it reaches 100% plug your laptop out turn on timer or know the time you plug the laptop out and then use it until it reaches as low as 30 percentage and now verify if that usage time is close to the battery lifetime that is promised by the company small differences are negligible but if you but if you see great differences like the promised battery life is 8 hours but you only get around 4 hours then it must be a symptom that there is something wrong with your laptop and you better apply for a replacement so now we have checked the battery and then we have another thing to be done here checking the wear level of a laptop so to check the wear level of a laptop you can download some battery analyzing applications but before that what is a wear level the wear level is nothing but the capacity that can be charged at that moment compared to the total capacity of the battery so using the battery analysis you can get to know about the wear level of your laptop but before that make sure that the laptop is calibrated recently for accurate measurement and importantly for a new laptop the battery wear level must be around 0 to 3 percentage it must never be more than that if the wear level of the battery is above that then there might be two reasons for that 
the battery might not be calibrated properly and the other reason is that it is a defective one or it is already used and talking about the wear level after a year the wear level can go up to 20 percentage which means that after a year you will be only able to charge your laptop up to 80 percentage of its capacity but there are a few ways to prevent this battery wear level issue well here's a card of the video that i've done previously on saving your battery life for long term the next up i'll recommend you to modify some settings here first of all enable hibernate which will be not available by default in any laptop that you buy now so you can enable the hibernate mode by going here and also modify this gpu setting specifically if you use this application called obs studio and finally we have the cpu and gpu stress test so now we all have this basic question right we, we all know that a cpu gets hotter and all, as well as the gpu gets hotter when we use it for a long time but what hot what is the reference to that what is the safe temperature for a cpu to be at so what are the numbers here so let me get that out of the way the optimal temperature for a cpu is around 85 degrees celsius to 90 degrees celsius during gaming session or intensive tasks when the cpu usage reaches 100%. Over 95 degrees Celsius is not safe at all and most CPUs are prone to thermal throttle at this temperature which is literally stepping down the speed of the CPU in order to prevent further temperature rise which can eventually damage the CPU. And then the normal CPU temperature is around 40 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Celsius is depending on your ambient temperature when the laptop is idle. Idle means doing nothing, no application launches, just nothing. To know well about your CPU and GPU, you can download softwares like HW info which will get you to know a lot of numbers about your CPU and GPU and at last I'll recommend you to do a stress test with applications like Scenebench R20 or R22, Unigine Heavens Benchmarks, 3D Marks, Time Spy or you can use some in-game benchmarks which are available in games like GTA 5, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed Origin etc. Do a stress test with the applications that you prefer to and then record all the scores so that in a year you may retake these tests and then compare these scores with the previous scores and then it will be an indicator whether you need to reapply the thermal paste in case you get really low benchmark scores compared to the previous year and now we are almost done with the first things that we got to do after purchasing a brand new laptop but now i have a bonus point for intel users under voltage well a lot of you might be aware of this term already but if you don't know then here's a card of the video that i've already done previously in my channel i think here anyway it's about undervolting your intel cpu in the hope of getting some extra juice from your laptop by undervolting you get a lot of benefits like good battery life increased performance, improved thermals and etc. So anyways, I think I've done my best in collecting you the information about the first things that you gotta do after purchasing a new laptop. And I hope that this video will be helpful in the journey of your new laptop. And I wish your new laptop will be perfectly fine for the next few years. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in another video.